The second DLC for Final Fantasy 16, The Rising Tide, gives you access to a brand new region, a new set of powers, and some really cool and surprising new features. There's more on offer here than I initially thought, so let's talk about everything on offer in this video without any story spoilers, of course. Good to know is that Square also released a free update for everyone with the ability to fully customize your button layout and some pretty wild buffs. Player attack is increased outside of select icon battles, so your base damage is increased across the board. But many iconic abilities have also seen their damage increased, their cooldown lowered, or sometimes even both. And Ramu's unique ability has been slightly tweaked to make it easier to use, and in my experience it's definitely a much better ability now. I actually used it quite a bit during the DLC, which you start from the reading table in Clive's room. However, just like with the previous Echoes of the Fallen DLC, there are some requirements you need to meet in order to access the Rising Tide. They're actually the same for both both DLC, so if you already played the first one, you're good to go. And if you haven't, I'll leave a link to our video on that first DLC where I explain exactly what you need to do. Oh, and before I forget, you also get some new items you can claim from the in-game menu, including a new weapon that looks pretty cool. But yeah, once you've met the requirements, reading the letter will start a short prologue quest in Sunbreak, but not long after, you'll end up in the new region where the rest of the DLC takes place. And that's of course a big difference when compared to Echoes of the Fall which was basically one very long dungeon. The Rising Tide, however, feels much more like another chapter in the story. You visit a new region with new side quests, new monsters, and of course, new loot. The new area called Mesidia is a beautiful lush jungle with remnants of abandoned temples, and while the weather in the rest of the game has turned grey due to the main story, the sky here is still a bright blue, giving it a nice contrast to the rest of Alistea. But in other aspects, the region feels quite similar to the regions from the base game. Side Side quests still consist of talking to people, fighting some monsters or collecting an item, and then returning to the quest giver. You do get a lot of info on the modes of water, the new tribe that's been hidden away from society for a long time that I found pretty interesting. But if you didn't enjoy side quests in the base game, there's not much here to change that. Okay, there is one small change that came with a new update, as you can now instantly teleport back to a quest giver after completing the objective, so fetch quests are a bit less tedious now. And the rewards are definitely worth it, because while you don't find new items as frequently as in the previous DLC, there are some nice new additions here, including an accessory that upgrades Ramu's unique ability to be even more useful. And I found more new power-ups for existing abilities, but most of the new items will provide buffs for the abilities of the new icon Leviathan. So let's go over those new powers. Of course, if you like the video so far, leaving a like would be awesome and subscribe for more Final Fantasy content. But yeah, Leviathan is of course the main selling point for the Rising Tide DLC, and I'm happy to say it does not disappoint. You'll actually unlock Leviathan's power relatively soon in the DLC, so you can use it against the new enemies and bosses too. Leviathan's powers are water-themed and give you the ability to summon massive waves to come crashing down on enemies or rapid-fire a barrage of projectiles at a target. But the most interesting addition is its unique ability Serpent's Cry, which transforms Clive's left arm into the world's deadliest water gun. When in this mode, Pressing square will fire a shotgun blast of projectiles at an enemy and triangle fires a jet of water in a line which then detonates and can launch enemies into the air. Performing these attacks lowers your tidal gauge which slowly refills over time but can also manually be recharged by pressing circle. This actually triggers a Gears of War style active reload where if you time the button input just right you get unlimited ammo for a couple of seconds. One final neat trick you can do while in this serpent's cry mode is double dashing as dodging twice in quick succession extends your second dodge, meaning you are able to create much more distance between you and enemies, and that is of course perfect for all these new ranged attacks. There are more I haven't mentioned, practically your entire melee moveset has been reworked with new ranged alternatives, so it is a great addition with a really unique playstyle. In fact, I challenged myself to make more of a range focused build with the new Leviathan powers, Ramu's upgraded ability, and then Bahama to round out the roster. And it worked surprisingly well, especially after I figured out that your triangle attack with Leviathan also triggers the extra projectiles from Bahamut's satellite ability. With these skills, you can pretty much stay at a distance, you don't have to use your sword at all, and can still deal a ton of damage. And thanks to the new loadout system, you can easily switch to another loadout whenever you want to. In case you didn't know, the new update also gives you the option to create up to 5 icon ability loadouts that you can easily switch between outside of combat. And you'll definitely want to put to 
together some powerful loadouts because once you finish the main story of the Rising Tide DLC, there's another surprise waiting for you back in the hideaway. In order to access it, you also need to do this on a save file where you completed the main story, which is marked with this golden star. If you then interact with the Arete stone, you will trigger an event that I want to talk about a bit later because of spoilers, so I'll give you a proper spoiler warning when I do discuss it. After that event though, a new mode will become available called the Kairos Gate, which is basically a 20 level long combat gauntlet with some new mechanics and new rewards, including weapons. You are free to pick whatever icon and ability loadout you want for this, but you have a default selection of equipment for the mode. Once you start, you want to make it as far as possible without dying, and each new challenge you reach will offer you new rewards. I already mentioned you get new weapons, and while the stats aren't great, you can use the look thanks to the transmog option. After completing round 3, I was already able to grab this electrified Radiant Leaven Bolt, which is basically a cooler version of one of the blades you get during the base campaign, and there are obviously more of these. But you'll also earn resources needed to craft a new set of belt and van braces, which are a significant upgrade compared to the items we had before. On top of that, you also become more powerful during a run by spending special resources you get as a reward after an encounter. The amount of rewards is actually tied to your ranking, as there is a scoring system in place for this mode as well. Enhancements give you stat upgrades like more health or damage and last the entirety of your run. But you can also buy boons, which are more specific buffs like more damage for counter abilities, and these only last a few rounds. Both are really useful though if you want to make it far, which means that scoring high to get more of these resources becomes even more important. And the cherry on top is that every fifth wave is a full on boss fight, so if like me, you really enjoyed Final Fantasy 16's combat, this Kairos Gate mode feels like the perfect send off. It's made even more special thanks to the other surprise waiting for you at the end of the DLC story, but as I said, I'm giving you a spoiler warning here because it's a cool surprise that I don't want to ruin. If you're still here, let's talk about the ninth icon you unlock, Ultima. Because holy shit, these powers are cool. First things first though, as noted, you unlock it by going to the Arete Stone in the hideaway after completing both the main story and the Rising Tide DLC, after which the stone will be glowing with a strange energy. Interacting with it starts a cutscene, and then you're dropped in a short battle challenge that allows you to try out your new powers, after which you get to keep them. Like Leviathan, pressing circle transforms you into a a different mode, changing pretty much all your attack inputs into new moves. You now attack with Radiant Wings, which cover a much larger area than your regular sword hits, so they are perfect for dealing with groups of enemies. Your ranged attacks now fire a burst of 5 projectiles, which can of course be charged too, as can your melee attack to summon a giant burst of flame. But the biggest change this ascension mode brings to the table is the ability to levitate in mid-air. If you jump, then press and hold X while in the air, Clive will stay afloat and can continue attacking. So this form is the perfect way to deal with airborne enemies as your melee attacks have massively increased range and you can perform this combo while hovering in midair. In general, the ad clearing potential of Ultima's abilities is insane and you also see this reflected in the rest of its kit. The highlights for me are Voice of Gold, which transforms you into a laser beam that you can control to scoop up and damage multiple enemies. And there's also the aptly named Ultima Demise, which draws regular enemies in and then releases a massive blast of magical energy dealing very high damage. Both of these are perfect in the Kairos Gate combat encounters as they allow you to quickly finish off a group of enemies. And of course, in case you don't like becoming a literal gold and slashing things up with your wings, you can always unlock the individual abilities and pair them with the power of another icon. Let me know your thoughts on the DLC in the comments, leave a like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe for more Final Fantasy content. You can also watch our video on the previous Echoes of the Fallen DLC by clicking on the screen. I will see you in the next one, goodbye.